In this section, we'll cover pulsar operation and the techniques used to prune trees from the ground and from an elevating work platform, or EWP. We'll also look at the guidelines for pruning to Australian Standard 4373. Pole saws are available in a range of sizes and power sources. It's worth mentioning here that the term pole saw can also refer to a manually operated saw blade mounted on a long pole, although we'll restrict our discussion to powered saws. The most common guide bar length on a professional pole saw is 250mm or 10 inches. However, some saws are fitted with slightly shorter bars, and some are capable of taking longer bars, typically up to 300mm or 12 inches. Power sources include two-stroke engine, most common for professional operators because it offers the best performance and power-to-weight ratio, four-stroke engine, less noisy than an equivalent two-stroke engine, but not as powerful for its size, battery or cordless, Less powerful and shorter in shaft length than petrol engine machines, but requires less maintenance. Mains power, or corded, plugs into a standard 240 volt power point, but only designed for domestic use. And hydraulic, or hydro saw, a professional saw powered by a hydraulic hose that attaches to a machine such as an EWP. The best way to reduce muscle strain and improve control of the cutting head is to wear a harness. There are different types of harnesses available, ranging from a simple shoulder strap through to an upper torso harness with shoulder straps and a waist belt that helps to transfer the weight of the machine down to your hips. In terms of muscle fatigue, the easiest angle to work at when you're using a pole saw from the ground is 60 degrees. This is also the maximum angle you should hold the saw at, so that you're not standing inside the drop zone while you're working. The drop zone is the area where the limbs and debris are falling. Note that even at 60 degrees, you'll still need to position yourself well away from large branches as they fall. Remember that branches can sometimes swing in unexpected directions or get caught in nearby branches as they fall. They can also break up when they hit the ground, especially if they're dead and brittle. Never stand underneath a limb being cut, or allow anyone else to stand inside the drop zone, including fellow workers who are removing fallen debris for you, or carrying out the duties of a safety observer. Let's look at some basic cutting techniques. To cross-cut smaller diameter branches, let the saw reach full revs before starting the cut, and then cut downwards, being careful not to let the saw drop suddenly at the end of the cut. As branches get larger, there's more chance of the bark tearing on the underside as the heavy section of the limb falls away. This is a particular problem when you're pruning near the branch collar, where the branch joins the main stem. We'll talk more about branch collars shortly, but first, let's look at a two cut method for cutting a large branch. To prune a large branch using two cuts, put a relief cut on the underside by pulling the saw back towards you across the bottom. Then do a top cut to release the branch. In the previous section, we talked about using step cuts as a way of controlling a chainsaw and stopping it from falling through the cut as the branch is released. This principle is very useful for pole saw operators, especially when the shaft is fully extended. Here's a reminder on how a step cut works. 1. Put the first cut on the compression side, which in this case is the underside. 2. Put the release cut on the tension side, with the step on the inside of the branch. Remember that the tension and compression forces in a hanger supported at both ends will be the opposite of the forces acting on a normal branch. This means that the first cut and the second cut placements will be reversed, so the release cut will now be on the underside. Always be very wary of branches that are under unusual stresses, because they could whip back unexpectedly when the tension is released. The benchmark standard for pruning trees is Australian Standard 4373, Pruning of Amenity Trees. 
There may be times when it isn't possible to fully comply with the standard, particularly if you're working near power lines and there are network operator procedures that apply. Nonetheless, you should always try to follow AS4373 whenever you can, because if pruning isn't done correctly, it can cause long-term damage to the tree or stimulate growth in directions that aren't desired. One of the concepts discussed in AS4373 is the principle of natural target pruning. That is, cutting branches at points where the tree's own chemical defences allow the wound to heal quickly and keep the tree healthy. This generally means placing the final cut just outside the branch collar, where the wood tissue from the trunk and branch overlap. On new growth, pruning cuts should be placed just above the nodes, where the lateral buds are attached to the stem. Don't make cuts along the internode, that is, the region between two nodes. Branch collars typically have a swelling around the base of the branch and raised or furrowed bark above the collar, called the branch bark ridge. This marks the union between the branch and the trunk. When the pruning cut is made, the tree's first response is to wall off the wound with callus tissue around the margin, followed by a very tough layer of wound wood to close off the opening. The sign of a well-sealed pruning cut is a full circle of callus tissue around the wound wood. To prune dead branches, the procedure is much the same. Place the final cut as close to the branch collar as possible without damaging any living tissue. Flush cutting a branch right back to the stem reduces the tree's ability to compartmentalize the wound and seal it off from infection. It also makes the wound larger than it needs to be. For these reasons, flush cutting is not an approved cutting technique in AS4373. On larger branches, pre-cuts should be used to cut the branch back to a stub outside the collar, so that the final cut can be made without tearing the remaining wood tissue. A typical three-cut method uses the following steps. First cut on the compression side. Second cut on the tension side to release the branch and let it fall and the final cut to trim the stub back to just outside the branch collar. If there's no visible branch collar, the branch bark ridge can be used as a guide for the final cut placement. To do this, mentally draw a line parallel to the trunk just outside the branch bark ridge. Start the final cut at the same top point, but cut at an angle that's at a mirror image to the branch bark ridge. In the case of a tree with co-dominant stems, the union between them is called a stem bark ridge. This time you should place the final cut outside the stem bark ridge with the bottom of the cut directly opposite the bottom of the ridge. The fork between a branch and the main stem, or between two branches, is called a crotch. A drop crotch cut is used to reduce the height of a tree by pruning leaders back to the lateral branches. Drop crotch cutting is a form of reduction pruning, since it's used to reduce the size of the tree. AS4373 says that whenever you do a reduction cut, you should ensure that the lateral branch you're cutting back to is at least one-third the diameter of the branch being reduced. Most pole saws are not electrically insulated. This means that if they come into contact with a live overhead power line, they'll form a conductive path to the ground for the electric current to flow through, via the saw and your body. In the case of high voltage power lines, even bringing the saw close to the lines will allow the current to jump or arc across the gap and flow to the ground. The same principle applies to trees growing near power lines. Branches and foliage can form a conductive path, especially when they're wet. They can also cause a flashover if they fall on the lines and bridge across two or more phases to create a short circuit. If you or the saw you're holding makes direct contact with a live low voltage power line, up to a thousand volts, such as a service line to a building, you'll get a very nasty electric shock that could prove fatal. A high voltage shock, above a thousand volts, would give you an even shorter life expectancy. 
Electricity network operators specify minimum clearance distances for personnel who are working near live overhead power lines. These safe approach distances differ, depending on the voltage of the power lines and the level of authority of the personnel. People who have not been authorised by the network operator to work near their power lines are called ordinary persons. Most network operators use the following minimum safe approach distances for ordinary persons. Note that these distances apply to any part of your body as well as any conductive item you're holding, including a pole saw. It also includes branches that are conductive, particularly when they're sappy or wet. Power line tree trimmers who are authorised to trim vegetation on the electricity network generally use insulated hydro saws when they're working from an EWP, or elevating work platform. This allows them to work much closer to the power lines. Nonetheless, they still need to stay outside the safe approach distances specified for their level of authorisation and the voltages of the lines they're working near. Here's a brief summary of the approved techniques you should use when pruning trees with a pole saw. 1. Set up an exclusion zone around the work area and ensure that all pedestrian and traffic movements are properly controlled. 2. Clear the work area underfoot, especially in the places where you and your crew will be standing and moving around. 3. Inspect the tree before starting work. In particular, look for fungal decay that might indicate weakened branches and dead or broken branches that could shake loose and fall. 4. Hold the saw at a maximum angle of 60 degrees to horizontal while cutting, and be ready to step back as soon as the branch starts to fall. 5. Keep the saw running at full revs throughout the cut, but reduce your pressure on the bar as you get to the end of the cut so that the saw doesn't jump out or suddenly fall through when the branch is released. 6. Don't stand underneath the branch being cut, and be wary of other branches overhead that may break away while you're working. 7. Don't allow anyone else to stand inside the drop zone while you're cutting, including fellow workers. 8. Avoid damaging other parts of the tree. Keep the spinning chain away from branches that will be kept, and don't let falling branches damage other areas of the crown or trunk. 9. Use approved pruning techniques to help the tree maximise its own defence mechanisms as it seals off the cuts from infection and insect attack. And 10. Stay well clear of overhead power lines. And remember that the pole saw is like an extension to your own body in terms of conducting an electric current.